All right, hello and welcome everybody to this week's video. It's not a video analysis. What I'd like to do this week is uh, to talk about something that occurred to me that is probably a pretty major issue with a lot of rowers. And it occurred to me during last week's training camp in Vienna. Now, it's all about the finish. And the question is, how hard should you pull at the finish? And my impression is that a lot of you guys and girls think that the finish has to be just like the catch where, where everything happens. And in, in my humble opinion, the opposite is true. So the party is usually around mid-drive, but the catch is a soft connection. The finish is a soft exit. So when I say soft entry, soft exit, I mean, you, you, you take time, it, it takes time to connect the blade in the water and it takes time to get the blade out of the water. Now, so much to the theory. Um, you have a soft entry, you connect, you connect the blade with the water, you have a solid drive, boom, party goes on, so you, you full acceleration from leg drive to upper body swing. And then you have the, then you, the question is how do you get the blade out of the water? You know, when the blade is under full load, how do you want to disconnect from the water and get it out smoothly? Well, you have to disconnect by reducing force. Uh, so essentially the, the, the information I want to convey in this video um, hey, the last five centimeters or one and a half inches or so, just take it easy. It's not about killing everything, everything at the finish. And I want to demonstrate this with, um, with this is a Biro Pro. I'm, I just got done testing. So <laughs> I regained my fitness by testing all the Biro's. We have a 10 to 15 minute test protocol ranging from 50 watts to 400 watts for a minute and then a peak peak watts, which is good for my ego because I can, I can, I can say uh, I did 700, 800, 900 watts and so on. Alrighty, so what do you, so what do you see here? It's a display. Um, if you have a bi rower, you probably notice two new things. So on, on the top right, uh, you can configure two, two values. Um, I configured this one to be stroke rate and I configured the right one to be power. So I get my force and angle curves along with the power. So what I want to show you is essentially two, two differences because a lot of you fear, well, well if, I don't, if I don't pull hard at the finish, I'm not going to have the same acceleration. And I just want to show you, it does not make a lot of difference whether or not you pull hard. You know, there, there's no blade on the outside. Okay, I, I admit. Um, but the, the idea is that quintessentially it's about the same. So. If you hear a bit of background noise, it's the guys working in the background, so bear with me. But I hope you can hear me well. Shall I turn up the volume? I'm rowing light now. And the idea is that that part, so from legs to upper body, this is of course where you have most of the effect. And then the last part here is more about stabilizing your body. This is where you look for the force connection between your feet in your abs and a bit of chest muscle rib cage. Your elbows should be in an, in a, aligned with the hands and the hand, and they should pull outward. So you wanna be in almost a 90 degree angle towards the inboard, okay? And if you then do a drive, um, let me show you a couple of things. Let's say I do a full, full slide stroke now, all the way, so legs, upper body and arms. And if I, just leave out the arms, just check the force curves. There isn't that much difference. There is a difference, we need the arms. Because now you say, oh well, the force curve becomes longer. No arms. Arms. So that is, that does create a difference. A noise in the background is uh, the guys testing a biro or sweep, so it's all good. Follow down it is okay. And the testing is yeah, yeah, this is this is good. The question is, how much does the force curve change if I pull really hard? Well, a bit, but not that much. So I'm gonna do a couple strokes where I try to pull extra hard, where I try to pull regular style, and where I try to not pull at all the last five centimeters. Okay, ready? Now. So let's go with 160, 180, 190 watts. So, regular arm pull. Now, extreme arm pull. Now, 
No arm pull. So you see in low steady state, the arm pull has a pretty massive effect on the curve. But what if you do this 30, 40 times a minute? How much effect do you have there? Let's try it out. Regular arm pull. No arm pull. And max. Not much difference, huh? So, perception wise, I had to work the hardest when I had to pull very hard at the end. And this is just on a bi rower. Now, if you're in the boat, and if you pull really hard here to finish, it's very difficult to get the blades out of the water. Because you can, you can you try to have full load on the blade at the finish, although you actually want to get the blade out of the water. Now, the consequence is that exiting the water will always have a lot of splash. The second thing is, if you're not 1,000% precise in your recovery, which means hands lead out, hip follows along, you stay loosely connected, so your hands lead in straight. You're tempted to do what 70% of all rowers, in my personal opinion, do. You're tempted to do this one. It's a downward motion. Now, downward motion is like a stern wheeler. It's not that effective. And, and first of all, the downside is that you lose connection because if you pull down, all vertical motion on the blade is useless. You do want vertical motion as soon as there's no load. So there's no use getting the blade out of the water with a lot of power. Second thing, it messes up your, your connection to the foot stretcher. So if you, if you pull down, it's very difficult to feel connected with these things here. But if you pull in straight, the geometry is a much better one, at least in my perception. There is no scientific backing, it's just my perception as a coach and athlete, a former athlete, not current athlete. All right, and the third problem is, if you go down at the finish, it's pretty difficult to get the blades off the water because if you want to move forward, of course the blades are off the water now, but the boat is unstable. And, uh, in order to understand this, you have to understand how to set up a boat at the finish. If you want to set up a boat at the finish, the most important thing is, besides the connection to the foot stretchers, to exit the water uh, with your blades at the same time. So your hands can be here, so don't have to be parallel, it can be here, but you need to start the initiative motion at the same time, that's hand precision. Now, when you pull aggressively down, you're tempted to do, may, you're maybe a bit imprecise, or actually, it's pretty likely that you will be not as precise as you should be. So, of course, the boat's gonna be destabilized. Now, imagine this happening in a double or a quad. You can always blame somebody else for the boat not being set up. So, there you go, there's a number of issues connected with this. What I wanna show you now is an exercise you probably can only do in the bio row well. Maybe on an erg, I'm not 100% sure. And this exercise should teach your muscles and, and create muscle memory that you are able to, um, to have a punctuated legs to upper body drive, but then set up your body here without pulling hard. And I will show you there's not much difference in the force curves, okay? So I'm gonna do a um, stroker at 20, 22 maybe. Um, 150, 200, 220 watts, whatever there is, I don't know. And I will, I will let go of the oar handles at the finish just to show you how little force is actually needed to move the boat. By the way, if you wonder how, how watts are calculated here, it's a whole different ball game than a linear ergs. Uh, on a biro, they call, calculate just like in the boat, so you have a strain gauge, an angle sensor, so we actually calculate work, which is distance traveled by force applied, and this is the only reliable way to calculate watts. So there's no algorithm behind it, it's just raw data. 
Um, there's a 1% accuracy tolerance, so it's scientific grade. So what we do is pretty reliable stuff here. Alrighty, ready for the exercise? Good, let's try it out. So. I will reduce now the power to finish. And you see, I can let go of my ore handles completely and it will not have a lot of downside effect. So, the re why is this possible? Because people overestimate the effect of the finish. The, the effect you want to create is when the boat is already moving. So at different times throughout the drive, and if you're interested, let me know. I can uh, elaborate further on that. But at different times throughout the drive, there are different times of effectiveness. So there's no use applying a lot of force at the catch because the boat isn't moving fast enough. There is no use applying a lot of force at the finish because you want to disconnect the blade from the water. So we've already elaborated that. Now, it's effective. And this is why you have the highest ratio between power input and speed gained for various, for various reasons. If you're interested, I happily explain this on uh, rowing.zone um, or in another video if you're interested. But this is where you have the best ratio is around mid-drive. So the power you put in versus speed you gain is just a lot better during mid-drive. And that's essentially here from legs when you use them the hip shoop, right there this is massive this is why you cannot allow yourself to waste the upper body motion at the catch because then you miss out on the greatest factor of acceleration in my personal opinion so if you get this right uh, an excessive arm pull at the finish is not needed and not at all seriously so it's it's legs mass and then it's time to set up the body. These are the three steps. So it's, it's legs, upper body, legs, upper body, arm, and from this part on, it's easy. Whoop. And this is what you need to teach your, teach your muscles to, to disconnect. It's not like you go easy and I'm done. You, you keep your tension so that here at the finish, you're still one with the boat. This is the entry ticket to accelerate during the recovery. All right, I'm sure there are tons of more questions to be answered. Um, let me know what they are. Go to rowing.zone, my user is at Aram. Let me know what you think and uh, let me know your opinion, maybe your experience, maybe other drills I haven't talked about yet. And um, anything to clarify, you know, please let me know. Uh, if you want to work with us, go to rmtraining.com and there's a program entry questionnaire. We also work with teams, so we write team training plans, we do team video analysis, so there's a lot of good things we can help you with. And if you're interested in this baby here, this is a Biro Pro, which will very likely go to Asia very soon because it's already, it's already requested for. And this is, I did the video with the last part of the testing. All right. So thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing and sharing, and have a very good day. See you soon, bye-bye.